there. I'm board certified professional organizer, Kathy Burns. I'm really glad you're here. This podcast is designed for busy entrepreneurs just like you who want to take better control of your business and move forward with less stress and more success. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Organized Energized Podcast is produced for your enjoyment and show notes are found at thepodcast.organizedandenergized.com. Come back often and feel free to add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow me on Twitter at Organized Energy and Facebook. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get into the show. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Organize and Energize podcast. Today, we're going to talk about how do you craft your business in today's world. Cesar Hasselman is an author, a mentor, a coach, and a business consultant. And after helping multinational and international companies adjust and succeed in their projects, he began to branch out and help small to medium businesses achieve success. And he founded the AMH Consultancy, AMH Consultancy. He delivers a roadmap for growth, strategic planning, and hands-on implementation plan and support. So we're going to talk to Cesar because he's passionate about identifying and understanding your environment to help you create a process that works for you. He's my kind of guy. So let's jump into it and talk to Cesar. Hi, everyone. I am back and I have a very special guest. We're going to talk about how to make your business grow with Cesar Castleman. And he is a pro. He's been doing it internationally with multi-billion dollar corporations. And now he is bringing it down to the level that we're on, enterprising entrepreneurs, small businesses. And we're going to get some information from Cesar on how to do it. So welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much, Kathy. Thank you for inviting me in. It's my pleasure. Absolutely. So let's talk about your background. I know you were you were sky high with some huge corporations. How did you get to that? And why have you decided now to tone down into talking to regular folks like us? <laughs> no, actually, uh, I, I, my first business started when I was 13. And since then, I was growing, growing different ways until... Um, we have a big crash for the president in my country who broke in the whole industry and people in 1997, something like that. And then we need to start over again from the start. So from, from that, that time, I start to work in a corporation that they have a marketing company. They have a little company inside them, but little is 20 to $30 million turnover when you talk about big marketing companies, right? And then in some stage, I got sick of that and I say, you know what? I love that little business. Nobody pay attention to that. I will open something similar and try to succeed. In the meantime, they, they have a big conflict. Uh, I have made a deal with an industry to be able to work inside the, 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 the industry. They have seven different industries. They have a bank. And I say, hey, can I be your principal supplier for subsystem, SAP systems? And, and from here, I can grow. And we have made a deal. I start to work with them. So from three people working for me, I start to go to the market and suddenly 18 months to, to 25, 28 months, we have 120 employees company because we just start to win so many accounts. And of course, because the business partner from that business, they come on board too because they were broken relationship with the other, the other group. And once they realized what I was doing it, they ask if they would like uh, if they if I can have them as a business partner, and for me it was just a jump of ten. So it's a mix of doing the right thing, knowing what you're doing, plus opportunity. Mm -hmm. If you're ready for them, you 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 get there. So and then in that situation, I have one one focus in my in my in my way to grow was I want to have the biggest names on each valuable industry. Okay, so, and then if I find one of them, I will become a reference in my market, simple as. And, and that's what really happened. So I got mm -hmm. big accounts. I, I was working behind the scenes for, for some marketing companies like Ogby, um, like Mark and Erickson. I used to win clients for them behind the scenes because on that stage, we, we did a lot of our main, main work was uh, SAP system, everything that was after subsystem, but we used to do B2B, B2Cs, marketing, uh, in, um, institutional communication for big companies, corporations online. 
And the marketing company on that stage, they don't, they was not aware how to translate the offline marketing to online marketing. And that where my company was in the middle of it. So I became reference of uh, being a strategist for online. So I used to get what they're doing offline and transmute and add value for that to become a online. And the universities online was starting, LMS tools was starting. So we start to get all those things and we just use those tools in a, in a, in a good way. And we start to give all the big uh, um, um, companies, corporations, their own university to teach and train the, the, the own clients, we call internal clients. And then once that arrived, I was working between marketing, HR, IT, and sales. And when you arrive in that position, a company that you can give solution for those four key stakeholders, you never leave. They are always gonna love you. Some, some, sometimes one of them gonna hate you because you need to deliver projects. You need to tell them the truth, but because the other three still love you, you keep yourself until the other one love you again. Right? Yeah. So, and then that's the way you arrive in that level. And until the day that I, I was too busy, the crisis was arriving and I look around my professional life was good, but my personal life, I have a six month year old kid that I just spent two weeks with him. I have four offices and one international office trade and 120 employees. So it was an 80 hours plus job. And, yeah. and I just look around, I could not manage my company anymore. It's a lot of things in between. We grew too fast. So it's a lot of problems that happen. So I need to fix so many things for the last two years that I was there. So I was not enjoying as much until the day that I said, the, the crisis arriving, the crisis arriving, we need to cut the, the loss from the big brands who give us awards and visibility. We cut those guys out and just keep the good clients who pay the bill because we can keep the same profit in our pocket while the crisis coming. Mm. And so the banks and the group didn't allow me to do it because in that stage was the second biggest one in South America. And, and then I said, oh, it's not my kid anymore. I cannot, it's not my business anymore. So I choose to leave and stay uh, one year sabbatical in Australia. And if you come to Australia for more than 60 days, prepare yourself, you're never gonna leave. <laughs> That's what you were saying at the beginning. I like a couple takeaways that I got from that story is I love the fact that you said, let me get the top one in this one, the top one, in this one, the top one, in this one, because I think as entrepreneurs, you know, if we set our sights, I've learned a lot, you know, you take the top 100 influential people that you really want to get to know, and you make that list. And then you start plugging on that list of who can I meet and who knows who, and that, that way you do become influential, which your case in point that it worked that way. So yes. that's a fan, that's a fantastic story. Mm -hmm. So when you decided to downsize, um, what did you do? Did you, did you close your offices and just let go of your staff or how did that work when you decided enough is enough? I don't have a life. I'm working too much. I can't handle it all. I have a six, it was a yeah. six month old, right? A six month old baby? Yeah, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, six month old baby. Today he's 15 years old, uh, which <laughs> is the joy of my life. Um, now, it's to arrive in that level, it's a lot of political games you need to face and you need to understand that no matter what you do, you cannot, you cannot win. Um, it's a lot of histories that, that people create in that stage of a company to take benefit for themselves. And it, it's a lot of, um, in a group of, that was an industry, a family group. And um, the people who make the deal with me was the top dog. So the, the guys who is the boss of the family. So is the kind of patriarch, you know, the God of the family. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the whole family hates them because they believe they take too much out of the table. So mm -hmm. I was facing things and challenge that, um, I was not happy with and histories that that uh, everyone that works in a big company understand the political game you need to go through and then that's the reason why i said you know what this is going to take me 10 10 years of my life if i try to face it up or, or fight for it while i was in australia i just i just arrived and realized that whatever i have in here nobody can steal and because i already built more than 10 business before arriving in Australia, I made a deal with my solicitor and say, hey mate, 
it's 50 50 you look after that i don't want this to bother me anymore i want my share of this and i don't want to talk about it if you come to talk to me about it your deals out of the table i pay you just your fees if you resolve the problem and get something for us then that's us you became a business partner but i will start my life again and that's what i have done Excellent. So now I know that you're working with small businesses. And if you had, I mean, I think a lot of people that are listening on this podcast are perhaps looking at um, not leaving a large company that they built, but actually leaving a large company that they didn't build so that they can start building their own company. You know, we do have the great exodus and the great resignation now. A lot of listeners at the show I know are reinventing themselves. So what piece of advice would you give someone that's starting? They're going to jump out of corporate, jump Jump into becoming their own entrepreneur. Um, what would you have to say, to, or what what would you think would be their first, second, third steps, or what would you recommend? Okay, I don't know if everyone gonna understand what I'm saying, uh, but um, if you do not, please um, jump on my Instagram or LinkedIn. I'll be happy to answer. But business model is a word that is is a title or whatever you'd like to call it, that a lot of people use in not the pro properly way and we don't teach we we cannot have this teach it in universities or courses business business model it's what gives you the platform to work from and the vision to go to okay and and uh, yesterday i was talking to a guy he's gonna turn 60 years in two weeks time he has a cycle of good momentum in his business in different times and he always arrive in a place that his business just all over and i was talking to him it was very easy for me because i'm doing this for many years now um uh, it's, it's very i know what his gap is his business his his business model is not attached to his solutions ah. so doesn't matter and then with his way to think and his way to do things so he has a beautiful structure that I can see going so further away if he just change a way to deal with the industry. He's not a box guy. He's not a guy that's going to do the same thing as everybody else because he doesn't want to be a leader. Mm -hmm. But he has a lot of knowledge and he's an entrepreneur and he can be a business owner. So, and then, and he just come with these waves of helping people and be, being the leader for a while and then lose them. You know, because he doesn't have that business uh, a model properly set up for his way to do things in the way that he likes to do things. So with the time, you lose what you build with momentum because momentum just can take you that far if you keep having that power. And if you don't have love, passion, and desire behind that, that power goes away and suddenly everything falls down. So could I ask you a quick question around that? So, so you're saying that, uh, and I think that this is true. A lot of entrepreneurs start because they have an expertise in something. And I did this way back when I started 19 years ago. I'd give all the information away. I'd give it, give it, give it, give it. Just give me all, all my knowledge away, right? But not really provide uh, the platform to give them a solution as such. I'm not really selling a solution. I'm selling education. Is that what you're speaking of? Kind of, yeah. So at the end of the not leadership point of view, yes, that's what the others take. They take your knowledge, they take your know-how. But if you're trying to build something that could become a franchise, they actually you you're gonna perceive as they stealing from you, you know. But they're not stealing from you. Your business model is wrong. You're doing education model in a thing that's supposed to be a leadership model. So mm. the business platform that you start from was wrong. Okay. So, so a if, solution if, model, give me, give me a, for instance, of a solution model so that okay. I can wrap my head so around this. Okay. So you need to understand your limitation, what you need to have to, to be able to deliver what you love to do. Right. And then from those limitations, you say, okay, I'm very good to talk to people and sell and bring people on board, but I'm not as good to keep them consistent, to give them consistency and leadership. So you need to find someone to do that. You need to pay someone to do that, or you need to find a business partner. The problem in, if you, if you think about the business model, you have three options. You can try to do it yourself, and then with some time you're gonna get tired, you're gonna lose it, because you're not gonna have that power to keep doing it. 
Um, you can uh, contract a manager to become the leader that you don't want to be. But then <laughs> in five years time, in five years time, he arrived to look around and say, hey, I have everything here. That, that person is not a leader. Why I'm still in under wage? I'm going to open my own thing. Make yeah. sense? So instead, people leaving, one leave and take everyone. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, then, yeah. And then you have the smart choice. Bring a business partnership, put a very solid agreement on that. Then you share knowledge and make that person do this job. Yeah. Make sense? So this, this is what I call business model. So you need to understand that. But it's hard for you to understand the big picture if you don't have the knowledge in business to be able to predict the future. And that's the reason why you need people who has knowledge to come down and say, hey, this is the way you love to work. This is what you got. This is the information from your business. This is the history that you have. Okay, with those things together, what you're doing is quite not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do this because based on that, you're going to arrive in a better place in your life, but also you're going you're gonna to have a better business. And right. that's, that's, that's okay. what I do. Okay, excellent. So it's like finding out what they want long term and then building the business based on, you know, I love the fact that you said the leader, the guy didn't want to be a leader. He wanted to be an information output device, right? So he wanted to just give his information to the world and someone had to lead. And I've seen that happen over and over where the leader finally is like, well, I'm doing it all. I'm the front man. So or the front girl, you know, so I'm just going to go do it on my own. And, and that's something that's right. that a lot of entrepreneurs are in fear of, quite honestly. So I know you have a book and you started uh, talking a little bit about it. So talk to us about your book, because I know that it is designed for small business owners. That's right. So um, because of those ups and downs in business, you have some situations, emotional fights that as an entrepreneur business owner, you fight them by yourself. So you, it's a lonely trip. You don't have many people to share. And sometimes you don't want to share with people that you love because you don't want to, sh don't want to show weakness or you don't want to make them worry because you are the responsible for the income of the house or you just feel by your ego that you feel that's too much for you to handle, whatever is the reason why. Yeah. So um, what I have done is every single business, they have what I call you know, the intersection base. So we have the ups and downs, so, right? If you think about the graphic, you have the ups and downs. But if you draw a line in the middle of your ups and downs, you already have a potential to create a platform to work from if you understand the reason why the ups and downs happen. And that's what I call cycles, right? So business cycles, life cycles, you know, personal life cycles, friendship cycles, family expectation, those things, because these all together, it's what put pressure on us in how to live our life. So the book is uh, actually break that down in pieces to show that uh, um, beside you're Catholic or you have a master degree or you're a CEO, if you are a human being first, and it doesn't matter which color you are, which religion you have, we are made in bones and, and muscles nerves and the soul. And if we could understand that from the start and it start to come from there to be able to understand our cycles, our life cycles and what people expect from us and what we make them expect from us. And we can take that aside and then you start to organize, okay, that's, that's part of that I need to get it clear to be able to stop to feel shame, to be able to stop to make decisions based in feelings that not gonna get me through. Right, so the book, the book approach is more, more or less like that. And we go through business situation, we go to personal situation, we go to industry situation, right? Because every single business, they have the cycle. If you do things that you sell more at summer, at summer will be probably almost 60, 70% of your revenue for the year. So you need to understand that if you don't have more six month cash flow while the summer finish, you might gonna finish the year counting the coins and this happened for 10 years and you didn't learn from it. So understand that's normal. Don't get emotional for that. Understand your numbers. Then you're not gonna be counting the, the coins anymore because every year that's happening for 10 years, why are you gonna suffer every year at the end of the year, right? Right, because you haven't <laughs> taken the time to stop and see what it, what it is. So I love that. Uh, now, mm. if you had to tell your, your younger, 
you're 18 and you're looking at yourself now, what would your younger self tell tell you right now? What would you tell? I'm sorry, I did that backwards. What would you, what would you, <laughs> okay, let's do it again. What <laughs> would you tell your 18 year old self right now to guide yourself onto a little bit easier journey? Oh, there he goes with the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell to listen to more of things that's calling your attention. Don't, don't let those things pass by because you're too busy. Those things, they, they actually cost me 20 million in my, in my company because I was seeing things. I, those things was giving me the indication that what was going on and I was not paying attention because I was too busy on the day to day. Ah. So listen to your guts is the, is the thing that I'm trying to say, uh, with more, with more intention, yeah. you know, don't, don't, don't let those little things that bother you a bit go away because you're too busy is a reason why they there. Yeah. I, I call it being stuck in busyness. We're so busy doing the busyness stuff that we're not really looking around us or listening to our intuition or listening to cues from other people. You know, we're just not listening because we're just like, we're busy. We're doing our stuff. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That, that's really that's good right. advice. Absolutely. Um, so when you have a success, Cesar, now that you're, oh, well, you're going to have your book come out. When's it going to be out? Yeah, in two weeks time, I'm, uh, the publish just, just sent me the, the whole package uh, awesome. approved for printing yesterday. So I believe in two weeks time, I'm gonna start to have the printing. Okay, gang, so we're now filming in March and this interview will be out after he's published. So what I wanna ask you, Cesar, is how are you gonna celebrate when your book is released? What's gonna be your oh, celebration? I'm, I'm, so yeah, if you wanna know that, I don't need to tell you more then. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have the first print in my birthday on 22nd of March. And I have a social project that's my own social project in Indonesia for the last 11 years. And I'm going there on the, I believe, 9th of April. And I will celebrate my book, my birthday with my social project. Excellent. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm glad that you had <laughs> it right there knowing what you're going to do. Uh, this is my year of asking everyone on the podcast how they celebrate, um, because I think celebration is so very important. And a lot of people don't know. I didn't know how to celebrate. Actually, when I launched my first book, I'm just like, OK, now I have to market. Right. And I didn't even stop to say, oh, I published my first book like that was just silly. So um, I love <laughs> that you have a plan um, about your end. So tell me about what you're doing in Indonesia. Oh, yeah, I have a social project that we take plastics of, out of the ocean. Um, it's a small, it's a small community of 2000 people in Grupuk. Uh, it was a place that was too far away for the consul to be able to take the beans out of there. So I just, I just embraced their problems. I was going there uh, 11, 12 years ago, and I have six of board I was surfing. We have a full moon party on a, on a, at the beach and I saw all those plastics and I could not enjoy the party. I, and I asked the guy who was organizing the party, say, hey, what do you think? Uh, how sick if people would like to collect a, a pile? Of, and then I made a score, a square, a big square on the sand and say, um, if you guys put it, uh, plastics on those squares, each square that's full of plastic, you guys gonna win one, one surfboard per square. And I have six, I just need one, right? So I have done five squares and the party became the plastic taking out of the ocean. And since then I start to go there and it started to get bigger and bigger. Today we, today we educate the school, it's the 250 kids there, um, 32 teachers and we take the plastic out of the ocean every quarter that's amazing that's amazing mm. yeah mm. there's too much there's too much riffraff floating around in the big blue that's for sure uh what an amazing yeah. thing thank you for doing that i so appreciate that work and i'm you're glad that you're going to tie it in with the trip and celebration your <laughs> book and all that so happy birthday early um i love thank that you. <laughs> yeah 
So, okay, you, you've been in business a long time. What, what's your favorite organizing hack or organizing system that you use to keep your life streamlined and simplified? Is there anything that you love? Yeah, I, I have developed some stuff for myself that I do every November, December for the whole year. And if you're talking about um, uh, IT uh, or an app, um, I use Pipe Drive, and okay. I customize Pipe Drive for me. So I put it um, telemarketing on the Pipe Drive. I record all the calls in and out. So I have uh, flux for the clients. Um, I have the cycle of the deliveries from my clients in the stage that they have, and all divided there because I customize. I spend a good money in the pipe drive to be able to customize and have people prospecting from there. I have uh, clients when they call my mobile, they go directly to there. So I have recorded all the calls. Um, if I need to go back and, and, and have a look on those, my clients, they, they receive the documentation when we started that I use this system and that's the way it works. Um, so every single email, phone calls, text message, uh, or media communication, from me and my clients, they go for the same place. So if I'm popping up my client's name, everything goes there together in a that. historic. Yeah, so that's that's my pipe drive. Uh, but they, it doesn't come like this. You actually need to customize for yourself, but you don't need to spend money to make that a simple tool for you anyway. Um, but before that, I have created my own little thing in the way that I like to work that I do between October to November. So what I do is I break down my whole year, uh, everything that I that I believe that I achieved and I, I did it right on that year and everything that was wrong. And I, I, I break down my big, my big picture and I break down in weeks. First of all, I break down in, in semesters, trimesters, months, weeks. And then from that, I don't do daily. I believe that's I believe you need to have a room for you to be able to to do things. And at the same time, the weeks, they're not uh, kind of strict. So I do it a monthly, which I break down in week. And if that takes four weeks, I'm not upset with it. Um, but what I have also is every quarter, I don't know if you notice, we have a f uh, every quarter we have one month that has five weeks, right? Right. So that week is mine. I don't sell, I don't trade. That's mine. It's one week that I take Ooh, off. I love that. Yeah, I never yeah. considered that. Every month it has five weeks we take off. I might have to implement yeah. that one. That, yeah, so the, what's, what's happened is this. It's a quarter, I play a game with myself of a quarter achievement. And that quarter gives me the right for that week I go overseas, right? So, and that's the week that I do my social project, by the way. Because okay. every quarter I go away. But then I start to get fancier because I discovered that if I work until Wednesday night, people don't feel that I was going away because I still in the brain on that week. And then if I, if I take the next week off, which is my fifth week, this gives me 10 to 12 days, mm. right? So yeah. if, if I go overseas uh, at the night of Wednesday, I wake up at the place that I would like to be. And then I have two days to slow down, keep talking to my team, but I'm already there. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what's happened. If you go away, you're going to spend the first two days thinking about what you left behind anyway. Yes. So I use that week of work internationally already with my team, right? Mm -hmm. So then the, the next week I'm off and I come back on the Saturday to give me time to spend on, on Sunday organizing my life, getting time zone properly, and have time enough to wake up properly on a Monday. So yeah. when, when I visit my clients, when I'm back at my office, people don't realize that I spent 10 days off because it was in the middle of the week. Makes sense? Right, absolutely. And I always so, thought, if, if, yeah, if you're gonna travel far away, I always recommend that people take 12 to 13 days, always, because you need yeah. three days to get into it and you need two days to get out of it. And then you have that seven <laughs> days in the middle where you can actually be there. Present. Enjoy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I do that and I teach all my clients to do the same, actually. 
Yeah, I have a funny history. I have a client that we came from nine hundred thousand dollars. He bought it his parents out, and today I believe next month after we're doing the acquisition this month, he will be fifteen million dollars company in seven years, and he's only thirty seven. Um, and um, uh, uh, the first question he asked me when we were engaging for this was, when can I have five month holiday? Ah. <laughs> And I look at him and say, fuck, do I take this guy on or not? <laughs> I say, but if he's crazy enough to ask me that and he's blank enough to tell me the truth, I can accept the challenge, right? But anyway, the last four years, uh, he always have at least 40 days, 30 days free and in, the, in, in the way that I build his business with him. Um, but yeah, but last, last year was four months working from Canada. You know, and his business in Australia. So That's yeah, it, it it it's part of it's part of not just the way that I live, but also the way that my clients start to live after we we yeah. get a good time together. Mm. I love it. Yeah, that's great because yeah. that that's what uh, people want is they want they want time away. They want to feel that's like right. they're not bogged down by their business, you know, and the more successful their business becomes, the more it turns into like a ball and chain unless it's planned properly in advance. So I love the idea. I love this idea of five weeks in a month. I'm going to start looking at the months out of the five weeks and start plotting and planning myself for that. Uh, why not? That's it. You deserve yeah. it. Especially, I believe in your country, you pay things monthly, right? Yes. So, um, in Australia, we pay weekly. So um in, in in your country will make much more sense for you because all the costs that you have for the month is already covered yeah in, in in australia we take that week but we still have the heat for the payments <laughs> uh -huh. but, but but in 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 my cycle this i don't count with that because if you're not making enough money that you can go away at least one one week every month or every quarter then yeah you're not doing the right job and yeah. The other thing that you just have said is um, people has an illusion, entrepreneurs, they have an illusion to build a business, to have a job, you know, is the illusion, is the trap, and not illusion, is the trap. It's a trap of the entrepreneur trap, if you, if you can say. You, you build a business based on passion or need or opportunity. Those are the three reasons why you start something as an entrepreneur. And then... If it's an opportunity, you might not qualify to keep managing that in the right way to grow. If it's passion, you might not qualify to look for your profit and a long-term vision. You know, uh, um, opportunity, passion, and need. If it's a need, no matter what, we might you might gonna succeed more than the others because you're gonna be killing every day to try to survive. So if you mix that up in in a in a proper way, you can have a perfect business. Hmm. Wow. That's a gold nugget right there. Yeah. Mm. You're giving gold. Well, Cesar, I know you have, speaking of giving gold, I know you have something that people can download or access to you. And I'm going to put the link in the show notes, but why don't you tell us a little bit about what it is that you're offering the audience here? Okay. Um, I believe we have uh, put it a uh, content that uh, wrap up reports from the book. Um, and this is more explanation. How can you really um, get something sorted to understand the way you make actions or you make your choices to make decisions for the day? I believe you're going to have a, a little sheet about it that you can go through and just reflect about it. Beautiful, beautiful. So we'll put the link below. And, uh, you know, it's it's been really interesting to talk to someone who's gone really big to small to now right into the perfect lifestyle that you want and the fact that you've figured out a way to give back with with without effort you know without any stress and it's also tied into celebration um i love what you're doing for the ocean so i just appreciate you being on the show i think we've learned a lot i know i've learned a lot from you and i oh, thank you I, yeah i appreciate it thank you cesar you have a fabulous time in indonesia Happy birthday early from oh, thank me, you. late from the audience. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and we look forward to seeing what you're doing over there in Indonesia too. Maybe if you want to put a link, if there's anything that, that we can do on our end, we can also put a link to your project there. Oh, uh, that's want. good. Yes, I do have a link on at um, 
Save the Ocean 2020 um, ah. uh, on, in, on, on Instagram. You're going to see a bit what, what we do there, but I do not promote this. It's, it's a kind of thing that I do from my heart. Um, I actually took, took me 10 years to tell people that I do this. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's completely out of pocket thing. So I don't have an entity that I have created for that. It's passion and, 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 and investment in the, in, in that area. I fell in love with them and it's just, they just extended family that I have. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, keep up the good work and hopefully we our cross our our cross will pass. Our paths will cross sometime soon in the future. Thank you, Cesar. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Signing off for well, now, gang. Pleasure. We will see you next week. Hey, thanks for listening to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you want to hear more feel free to subscribe on the platform of your choice. Also, if you feel so inclined, I would truly appreciate a good rating from you to me. Have a stellar day.